So in this episode, we're going to be focusing on look development. Now, those who follow my channel for a little while know I do a lot of my film look work in Dehancer, but what I want to focus on in this episode is the new tool that came along in version 19 called Film Look Creator, and this is allowing you to do filmic looks. Now, why am I focusing on it now? Well, they've just released an improved version of it with the beta version 4, so let's go and take a look. So we're in Resolve, I've got this shot here. This is shot on Arri Log C3, and I've got my classic no tree here, but a simplified version of it. You can download this for free. There's a link in the description for that. And just to show you what's going on with color management, because obviously I work with CST color management. So down here, we've got DaVinci RGB. We're in DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate, Rex of the Nine Gamma 2.4, because that's what my monitor is currently calibrated to. If yours is calibrated to 2.2 for web, change that to 2.2. The first node is my CST up to DaVinci Wide Gamut. So that's going ARRI Wide Gamut 3, ARRI Log C3 to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. And then we do all our grading, including the film look that we're going for in the middle in DaVinci Wide Gamut space. And then at the end, we've got our DaVinci Wide Gamut coming back down to our display. So that's Rex of the Nine Gamma 2.4. So this is my classic typical workflow. If you don't understand CSTs, I've got an episode on that as well. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. And if you want to know how I use my classic no tree, I'll put a link to that episode in here as well. But let's get on with this episode. Right, so all I've got going on here is a few nodes. And the first thing I do is play with my look development. So what I've done here, I've got one node here and that's just got some very simple balance and exposure, just a little bit of fine tuning, mainly in the HDR tools for exposure. And down here, I've done a little bit of stuff with these printer lights here, just to get that in a neutral starting position. So it was there, it's got a little bit of a green cast on it. So I've just neutralized that a little bit. And that is a great starting point. So once I've got my shot balanced and in a good place, the next thing I do is focus on the look development itself. Now, classically, I use Dehancer. This is well documented on my channel. So let me just show you what I would have done typically, and then I'm gonna try and do it in Film Look Creator. So so let me switch my Dehancer node on. This is, as you notice, is right at the end, just before my final CST. And that's because Dehancer works in DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate. By default, it's on Rec.709, so make sure you switch it into DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate. So I'm working in the largest color space I possibly can. Let me show you what settings I've done. I'm not gonna build it from scratch. I've already built this, but if I switch that on and off, you can see we go from quite a video looking flat file, obviously it's just basically balanced, into this really nice glossy filmic look. So I'm going to show you the settings down here. I haven't done any film negative in here, but I have done film print. I've got Kodak 2383 print film. It's a classic one that people use. I did have a look at Fujifilm 3513 on this one, but I actually prefer the 2383. And I've not done much changing here. I don't like to change this too much. I've brought the contrast up a little bit and the density down slightly. Uh, and the exposure down just ever so slightly. But I normally like to do that on a scene by scene or indeed a shot by shot basis. So I don't like to play with these too much. But basically we've got the Kodak 2383 on. Let me switch that on and off. And that's there. Now the other thing I've done, just to show you, down at the bottom here, the first thing I did actually was disable all the tools because it puts a load of grain on and all this sort of stuff. So just disable all those tools. Higher quality mode. And my output here... I've just brought it all the way back to 38.5 or thereabouts. So full strength, it looks like this. And then if we just knock that back, it kind of goes, well, it's roughly where it was again, 37.6, that's fine. So I'm just knocking back the amount of that 2383 look that's going into it. And that I'm really happy with. And I've tried this out on a few other shots as well. The next thing I've done in here is I have, what have I done? I've gone to my color head here and I've just made a slight tweak here to my highlight tone. I've just warmed it up ever so slightly, hardly touching at all, but just giving the highlights a little bit of extra warmth in there. So if I disable and enable that, I don't know whether you can see that going on. If you look at her forehead here, you can probably see it. So it's enabled and disabled. And then coming down a little bit more, I've got some halation on. Now I have to make these quite strong because I've half mixed back the whole of Dehancer. So sometimes what I do is I put the halation and bloom and things like that on a separate node so I can control them separately. But I've just put it all on one for this one. So let's enable that. And where can we see that best? If I just zoom into this and show you what's happening down here a little bit. It's happening all around here, edges of this paper here. And what I'm gonna do is switch it off. You can see that's now nice and clean there and we've got no halation at all. Switch it back on 
and we've got this really beautiful halation just kicking in there. The, the halation on Dehancer is absolutely gorgeous. And I've played around with a few of these little settings. And same for Bloom. So enable and disable. Just gives it a really nice filmic look. And that's pretty much all I've done on Dehancer. So if I switch that on and off again so you can see what's going on. And we've got a really nice look. So the next thing I would do is test that on some of the scenes. So let's click on here and have a look. I'm just middle mouse clicking to copy. That's looking great. Obviously, I can tweak the balance and exposure on a shot by shot basis. And let's just try it on this night scene. What I'm really testing here, I'm going to have to take off that, is that the look that I've got going on Dehancer is correct. And it looks great. Okay. Let's get back to here. So what I'm going to do is a new version. So we're going to keep that in there. Let's just add a new version. So I'm going to do that in the software. Normally I would just do that on my panel, but I'm just going to say create new version. And I'm going to copy all the marks across. So the balance and exposure and everything copies across. And I'm going to disable Dehancer. And I'm going to go to this node here and I'm going to call this Film Look Creator. Now the great thing with Film Look Creator is it comes as part of DaVinci Resolve Studio, whereas Dehancer is a third party plugin that you have to buy. Now if you are interested in looking at it, there's a 14 day free trial at dehancer.com. I've got a discount code. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. But let's take a look at the Film Look Creator. So you'll find Film Look Creator in the effects palette. Just drag and drop it on and straight away we get this filmic look. Now the big difference between Film Look Creator and something like Dehancer is it's not trying to emulate actual film stocks. It's allowing you to create your own unique kind of signature look. So let's have a look at what it's actually doing. Now, when I'm creating my looks, I really want to start from scratch, as you saw me do in Dehancer. So the first thing I did in Dehancer, down the bottom, switch everything off. I want to do the same in here, but let me just show you what the presets are. So in here, we've got 65 mil, we've got 35 mil, and we've got a cinematic look. And these are basically using all the different settings that are in here, but they've just got some presets built in. So it's a nostalgic look. So most of these, as you'll kind of see, are not actually that much use to us to get a, a really good professional starting look. So if I go down to custom, you see that we've still got a look going on. If I disable and enable that, we've still got this distinct look. Now, this is what they changed in beta version four. They've allowed us to actually reset it and start from scratch, which is exactly how I want to work. So I'm going to go in here and say clean slate. OK, we've got clean slate. And when we do that, now there's no effect happening. So I'm just pressing a button on my panel. If you can hear it clicking, that's disabling and enabling that node. You can click on the button there on the number itself to do that as well. All right, let's go a little bit deeper into here. So we're now in our clean slate. So we've got color blend and effects blend on full mode. So that is basically all your color and the effects is things like halation, bloom. So we're gonna try and do exactly what we did in the Dehancer. All right, the film look we've got going on. This is the amount of film look you've got going on. By the way, the color space overrides. You can set your own um, color space that you're working in. I've got mine set to use timeline. So it already knows that I'm in Da Vinci wide gamut, but you can work in aces, for example, you can set that to whatever you want. All right, the film look blend. This is the amount of filmic look it's going to give it. So this is basically taking us to that default state it gave us a moment ago. So this is the amount of film look you want in. So let's just dial in a little bit. Now we're going to go to our color settings. Now in here, you've got the ability to change exposure, contrast, highlights, fade, the white balance. A lot of these things are things that I do on a sort of scene by scene or a shot by shot basis. So I don't want to change too much in here. In Dehancer, I did bring down the exposure slightly. I don't think I need to on this one. But what I might look at is subtractive saturation. So this is really nice as I increase saturation in here. It does work in a subtractive way. So it's not increasing luminance and it gives it a very filmic style. Uh, that sort of works with the richness tool as well. In fact, I think I'm going to take that right back because I don't really want that in. So I'm just going to switch it on and off again. This is what I do quite a lot. As I'm designing a look, I'll switch it on and switch it off. I might need to do a little bit more work here just to compensate for what the film look creator is doing. But what I'm finding straight away is it's not giving me that absolute punch that Dehancer did when I set my Kodak 2383. So I'm going to try and not in my head exactly emulate 2383 with this. I'm just going to create a filmic look. So uh, let's see what else we can do in here. Let's maybe add a little bit of contrast in there because the film, the uh, film, the Kodak Film 2383 will give you warmer highlights, cooler shadows. So I'm going to try and get that look going on in here. All right, bleach bypass is actually quite nice on here, but I'm not going to use it in this. All right, let's scroll down and split toning. Right, so split tone is where we get these cooler shadows and warmer highlights. So I'm going to stick that on and 
I have to dial in an amount. So this is where we really start getting that filmic look. So if I dial that in, you can see that really changing. My highlights are getting warmer and my shadows are getting cooler. And using the hue and pivot, the pivot will change the point at which a shadow becomes more of a highlight. So this is basically saying how much will be cool and how much will be warm. And you can see that as I lean towards the highlights, everything becomes uh, cooler. So I've got to find my balance point there. And I'm finding this is not that intuitive, actually. She feels very rich in there. So let's have a look at the hue angle. No, I definitely don't want to change that. So I think the amount is probably just too strong. It feels like it's very, very strong straight away. Something like that. Let's switch that on and off. Yeah, that's quite nice. It's a little bit orange, but I would allow for that using my balance and exposure here. I will pull her skin tones down a little bit. Maybe let's get that subtractive saturation back down again. All right, so that's the split toning. I'm just gonna switch it on and off and just check it is actually making it better. Okay, I'm not 100% convinced. What I might do is go down to my global blend here and do what I do with the handset and just dial it back a little bit. And that will allow me to put a little bit more in. So I'm kind of pushing and pulling the amount of that effect going in. Okay, that's much better. That's much better now. All right, vignettes. I do my vignettes manually. I wouldn't ever use a vignette as a global setting for a job. So halation. I had halation on in the answer. I use halation a lot, but I like it to be very subtle. So let's stick on our halation. And let's zoom into that area that we were looking at earlier. So if I go down to here, let's come down here. And I want to apply halation here. Let's see what's actually going on. So if I disable and then re-enable... So there's not much halation going on in there. So I need to push the amount up. In fact, the more I'm pushing and pulling that and I can't actually see that changing much. So what I'm gonna do is take off highlights only. There we go. So now we can see the halation coming in. So if I switch it off and on, yeah. So we can see that around here. Okay, that looks really nice actually. Let's just dial it back a little bit. And let's have a look at that on our whole image. Just check nothing's going on. So if I enable, and disable that. So in fact, if I if I take that off and then enable it, her eyes, it's affecting her face quite a lot there. So let's bring that amount back. Let me just check what's going on on her face because obviously I want her face to be good. So halation will generally warm. It really helps with skin tones. It just puts a little bit of, sort of warmth and glow in skin tones. I really like it. But this is actually making the image look a little bit out of focus, to be honest. Let me try that on highlights only. Yeah, okay, that's doing something weird. So I'm gonna keep that on highlights only. So, okay, that is that halation is definitely not as good as Dehancer's, but it is doing the job. So let me tr just try that, but I don't want the image to go soft, that's for sure. Let's have a look at what's happening with the bloom. So let's go down here and enable bloom. And let's see what's happening there. Uh, let me zoom in again. So the bloom should be kicking off around here, that sort of thing. That is super subtle. Let me give it a bit more radius. Let me exaggerate it, see what's going on. Yeah, it's definitely there. Oh, there, there we go, there we go. Right, so I need to dial that back a little bit now. That's too much, but I like it. Uh, Shift Z, by the way, will set this back to default. And the other thing you can do, if you press Shift and F, you can actually have a bigger view. I should have put this on earlier. And you can see all your settings down here. In fact, this would have been much better to work with earlier. So I can still enable and disable the look. And that's going on there. Right, so grain, what's happening here? Now grain, again, I would put on separately. I wouldn't have this as a global look necessarily, but let's just see what's happening. And that looks really subtle, which is exactly what we want. So that's cool. Flicker gate weave, I'm not gonna do any of this stuff. I don't want my stuff to start flickering. But that is giving me a pretty good look there. So let me take that off. So Shift F will bring us back into this mode. And what we need to do now is try that on our other shots. So let's go to this one and copy it across, just by middle mouse clicking. And I'm gonna switch it on and off. It doesn't feel that strong. So what I wanna do is go to my global blend and I'm gonna push it back up to make it a little bit of a stronger look. And let's go back to here and copy that back across. And this is what you do when you're doing your look development. You're gonna push and pull and push and pull, try it on other shots. Once you're happy, you don't need to touch it again. So let's just remind ourselves what the Dehancer version looked like. 
And this is a stronger look, to be fair. This is the Kodak 2383 look. There's much more separation between the shadows and the highlights and the warmth and the coolness in my mind. Back to the film look creator, I would need to push these dials a little bit harder, maybe play around with the split toning a little bit more to get something a bit closer to what I liked in Dehancer. So the fact they've actually allowed us to have a clean slate means I'm gonna take the film look creator a little bit more seriously. I'm gonna push it a bit harder, see what I can get with it. I think maybe this combined with Dehancer might give me some interesting looks. And I hope if you found this interesting, you'll consider subscribing, hit the notification bell, hit the like button for me. If you want a discount on Dehancer, the link will be in the description. Film Look Creator obviously comes with DaVinci Resolve Studio. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.